Okay, right on. So, what's up, guys? I got an awesome, awesome special interview <laughs> for you guys today. The name of this interview is going to be about a project called Internet Money, and we're going to be talking with KG, the founder. And so, a little bit of a introduction, a little bio behind this man is, uh, so KG is the founder of Internet Money, which recently launched on the Binance Smart Chain. He is an active well-respected and very popular member of the Pulse Chain and Hex community and serve as a key moderator for Pulse Chain, Hex, and PulseX Telegram and Reddit community groups. So if you guys ever interacted on Telegram or even gone on Reddit and asked a few questions, I guarantee you KG had a response to it. So <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I, man, I, I remember, you know, going on Reddit and posting something and you were either, either the first or second response to my questions and all that stuff. So it's really great. And, um, you know, it's really great to see how you're so active in the Hex and Pulse Chain community, because I firmly believe, you know, it's probably one of the strongest communities in crypto. I mean, would you agree with that? Oh, I would agree that it's. It's definitely the strongest one I've ever interacted with. So, oh yeah, hands down. Oh yeah, absolutely. And to see like a growth, like a project like Hex, I, I remember when it was like a thousand users and I know, and to be honest, like I always try to stay honest when it comes to this crypto thing. I, I, I never took it seriously until it got up to like 20,000, like 30,000 members. I was like, <laughs> holy smokes. And then I think the other day on the Hex website, they have over 100,000 wallets or something that own Hex. So I think that's the best indicator for how large the community is. So sure. Cool. So um, kind of starting off, you know, one question I always like to ask like developers is, you know, you can get a real good sense of what the project is based off of their background. So if you want if you don't want to mind me asking, you know, what, what's kind of like your background? Like, uh, what, what's some stuff about you that, you know, most people don't know? Sure. So um, my outside of crypto career is I am a realtor and I'm making the transition to a full-time career into crypto. And with this project that we're building, it appears that that's now possible. Uh, I I have been in I've been aware of and interacting with crypto since oh man 2013 ish I I first discovered Bitcoin on the uh, the Tor browser while I was digging around on some sites there and no I didn't buy it at the time so I'm not <laughs> saying I, I I I realized those gains broke high school me saw bitcoin at like 80 dollars and thought oh my gosh how could anyone ever buy this i you know it seemed like so expensive at the time but that's uh, i'm a father of two and crypto and philosophy are my passions crypto and philosophy who's your favorite philosopher just out of curiosity sure it's a it's a hard tie between alan watts and ralph Emer ralph waldo emerson Okay, I got you. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know either of those guys, but I'm gonna definitely Google it after this interview. So, <laughs> oh man, I'll send you some videos. I'll send you some videos, man. <laughs> right on, right on. All right, cool. So, um, kind of leading off of that question. So, what what really got you in, interested in cryptocurrency? Was it that first time when you, you saw Bitcoin, or was it like you know you dabbling, just doing research on different projects? Because I think right around that time, uh, like. Ethereum started kind of launching a little bit and, and all these like theoretical projects started coming out. Sure. So when I first interacted with Bitcoin, it I didn't really catch the crypto bug at that time. I guess I really didn't understand it or realize the impact of it. And then as I started to, you know, a few years later, understand what crypto was and could continue to do for the world, excuse me, is when I really got inspired. And then my first like ape in to a crypto project, always embarrassed to say it, but again, you know, being transparent, it was Dogecoin. That's the first coin I ever aped in on. And I got wrecked. I did. I, I, I got in at like 50 cents. You know, I was watching it. I didn't, my uncle, he had been telling me Dogecoin, Dogecoin, you know, it's a dog coin. So then Elon Musk comes out Saturday Night Live, you know, that whole hype. I get in at 50 cents. I see it go to 74. I think I'm going to be rich. And then it crashes and it never came back. <laughs> so I got wrecked on Doge. But 
around, you know, around that time and a little before I was getting very inspired by crypto. And then it just turned into literally laying on the bed in the bed, 4 a.m., getting every little bit of information about whatever project I could. And then I started just going crazy. So it's all it's it's been uphill, downhill from there, however you see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I remember when those coin just went absolutely bananas. And when I, when I first researched it, it was like a it was just basically a copycat of Bitcoin, except you get more of a block reward off each block and and I remember, you know, how it became this concept of the meme coin. I think that was like the first project where meme coins were actually taken seriously. And then exactly. That was, exactly. Yeah, it was, it was the it was probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And then that led to Shiba Inu. And then now everyone's trying to add like Inu behind a coin. And it's absolutely bananas. I, I got nothing as meme coins, but also, you know, the the best coins that um, really, really strive are the ones with like an added utility behind them, in my opinion. Sure. So, but sure. awesome. So, um, cool. So the one thing I really want to dive into before we start asking questions about internet money, could you just like take sure. a brief moment and just kind of describe what inter- internet money is for, you know, anyone who's very new to this project? Sure. It's money on the internet. No, <laughs> that's kind of one of the taglines we use. Uh, really, it's it's an it's an ecosystem. So right now we have one token actually called Internet Money, uh, and it serves as a peer to peer digital cash. What Bitcoin tried to be, and it's deflationary. So it we built it to rival the the fiat dollar. Because, you know, most places, if not all places around the world, their dollars inflating and becoming less valuable on a daily basis. So we wanted to rival that. And we have a second token, which is a dividend token. And, you know, I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit. But ultimately, it's just an ecosystem of uh, value trying to bridge the non-crypto user into crypto. Awesome. Awesome. Great explanation. Yeah. So um, kind of building off of that, um, I really want to talk a little bit about the vote to burn because I think this is the main utility behind this token. This is what gives it some really, really intrinsic value and also is a very unique concept in comparison to a lot of these other projects. So kind of starting off with, you know, the vote Vote to burn is where, you know, the community comes together and they decide whether or not they want to burn a certain amount of tokens. And it's based off of how many tokens are bought. And there's like a fractional share. So I think for the first quarter, for every dollar token you you buy, you burn, I think it's 0.1 and then it goes up to 0.35. And it, and it continues to increase if the community decides not to um burn that token that specific quarter so if you decide not to burn it then the rate increases over time and then it's capped off to about 0.1 of the entire uh supply if i read that correctly right yes yes or or 10 percent. yeah yeah oh yeah 10 percent. yeah 10 percent. so i i'm I'm an engineer so when when i say 0.1 or 10 percent, i same thing yeah same same thing thing. yeah (laughs) so i think um the one thing I was really interested in, or the community was actually really interested in knowing is where'd you come up with this idea behind a vote to burn? Because when you look at it and you see, um, you know, people coming together and and talking, it seems like it really strengthens like communication within the community where you you have multiple people saying, hey, we shouldn't wait to vote to burn so we can get a higher rate in the next quarter, or we should just keep burning, burning, burning so we can drive this supply up. So what what was kind of the idea behind that utility? I'm, I'm really curious. Sure. So our contract and our and the token internet money itself is very simple. There are it doesn't really do anything. You know, there's no crazy mechanics built in. It's literally you can buy it, sell it, send it, trade it. That's what you can do. It's as basic as a cryptocurrency gets. So then the problem became well, how do we keep the community engaged? How do we continue to 
talk about it and build value around it and build a community around it. So the, the four founders, we are constantly talking to each other. And I believe it was Kyle Cruz, one of our founders who initially said, Hey, what do you guys think about this idea? The vote to burn. And then it was just all from there. So <laughs> it's, it's a really cool. And, and like you said, everyone's talking about it. So we envision like team burn team, no burn. And because we're an, an intro level token, an ecosystem, we wanted to introduce game theory, but not like hex incredible token, incredible project. That's like, like you, you got to put in time and like to get, you don't go from zero to hex, right? If you do, you know, the game theory is intense. So we wanted to come up with game theory that would introduce the new crypto user to what game theory can be. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think um, when it comes to this cryptocurrency space, you know, you can have like a token with awesome utility and everything behind it. But the idea of cryptocurrency is actually this community thing. And this is something I believe financial advisors don't really understand. And I have to bring this token up again, but like Dogecoin. Dogecoin was one that really proved that theory. And we have all these analysts going crazy about it and, you know, having a lot of fun. I'm not trying to get into the financial political side of things, but sure, I sure, think sure. I think that's what's, what was really proven by like things like Dogecoin and Hex is that community component. And that vote to burn really, really, you know, develops that awesome community like we were just talking about before. So, and it's also very, very unique because when it comes to that deflationary mechanism, you get coins like Safe Moon, where you sell something and a certain percent of it is just like uh, burnt. Um, I'm not sure if you've been keeping up with Pancake Swap, but Pancake Swap is adding like so many burn features. I can't even keep track of it. Like you have to make <laughs> a whole freaking list of it. So, but I think it's really cool to add this really community component to it. And I think, you know, there's potential for it to be um, very beneficial down the road. So, one thing I was trying to look into, um, I was trying to research how many tokens have been burnt so far, and I'm sorry, I, I kind of fell short on this. Do you by chance know off the top of your head, or is there like a place where people can go and look for this? Like, like do you have it like on the website somewhere it says this many tokens have been burnt? Or Sure. So technically, zero tokens have been burnt at this moment. Uh, the token exists on Binance Smart Chain. And the burning will begin when we fork over to Pulse Chain. Okay. So if you go to our website right now, imcrypto.net, we do have the, so we're doing what's called the big burn. And for every one IM, internet money, that's bought on BSC, two get burned on Pulse Chain. So right now, we're as soon as we launch on Pulse Chain, we're up to 21 trillion being burnt. <sighs> Wow. And as our community grows, that number just keeps going up and it keeps going up faster and faster. So it's like, we could, like if Pulse Chain takes six months, we could launch and burn 150 trillion tokens. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's you know, it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's absolutely bananas. Okay, I got that. Yeah, I, I kind of fell in the cracks on that, on that burn concept. But yeah, definitely right. really, really good to know. And, you know, that, that's really cool. So I think like kind of, down the road so i'm talking long term and you know it's kind of hard to predict these things but do you think this utility is going to be sustainable for the project down the road because this idea is very unique and with these unique ideas there's potential for failure but i mean that's like that with almost any project so sure so not to complicate things too much but there's another layer that and, and if you want to get into this token a little later, please feel free to tell me, hey, KG, now right this second. But we have with our second token, because uh, we're also building a wallet. And that wallet is going to be a native Pulse Chain wallet. And that wallet is going to, when swaps occur within the wallet, will generate fees in the form of Pulse, that the swaps that happen on the Pulse Chain side. Now, we have another token called Internet Money Dividend, or IMD. And the reason I'm bringing this up right now is because it's very relevant to your question. 
So there is a supply of IMD undetermined at this time that may or may not, when it collects pulse, buy IM off the open market and send it to the burn address. So even if the vote to burn loses community engagement and people aren't really participating, there's going to be, I have to say possibly, there's possibly going to be this additional mechanism that is putting buy pressure on IM and taking more out of circulation. So I think that we've created a very sustainable uh, system for long-term and steady price appreciation. Oh, that's that's absolutely awesome. I think that's a similar concept with PulseX, I believe, because when I when I read about that, um, you know, that that definitely opened my eyes. And it's really great to see you guys possibly go in that route. So that's awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So um well we'll talk about IMD a little bit at the end, but definitely thank you for that description. That, that was really awesome. Um so I think the one thing I really want to talk about is your, your fundraising through the project. Cause you mentioned a little bit in your, in your black paper. And so I know you're talking about using it to uh, fund a wallet. And also um, there was also another component. I can't remember off the top of my head. So I, I really wanted to kind of dive in about how you guys raise these funds and what are you going to be using them for? Cause with a lot of these projects, I know, like there's mining projects and there's a lot of these crazy dApps. And I think the development team will get something like five or 10% of the supply and they use that for either marketing or developing. Are you guys kind of following that format or using like a, or a, a different format? We're using a different format. Uh, I am actually does not have a marketing and development wallet. And um, at one point, so it depends on what version of the black paper you're looking at. If you're looking at version one, uh, it did, but we removed that mechanic. So it do, we will not have a marketing or development wallet. So we will not be selling tokens on the open market to f- fund uh, future endeavors. A big thing that's going to allow us to uh, generate the income necessary for future development is the wallet. And that's not going to affect holders of either of our tokens so we kind of created we 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 took the sell pressure off of both of our tokens okay okay awesome awesome so um i want to talk a little bit more about that wallet as well so with um you guys really pushing about you know launching a wallet and it's gonna have like you know the pulse chain and and whatnot is it going to be kind of similar to like, you know, Metamax and like Binance Smart Chain where, you know, you have, you know, access to the Pulse Chain blockchain and then you have Ethereum and then Volus or is it just going to start off with just Pulse Chain and only be exclusive for Pulse Chain? So it's going to start off exclusive to Pulse Chain. We will, like Metamask, give you the ability to connect to different networks, but those are going to come in time. So like MetaMask, when you download it and you're automatically connected to Ethereum, when you download our wallet, you're automatically going to be connected to Pulse Chain, even when we add other networks. Okay, cool. And so, you know, how how is this wallet going to be different from like, you know, like um, MetaMask? I know you're automatically going to have Pulse Chain, but is there going to be any added features? Because I know um, when I was reading about this on, on your black paper, I mentioned that you're going to have like statistics about, you know, I am uh, internet money with like, you know, like volumes and market cap and whatnot. Um, basically what I'm asking is what, what, what's going to differentiate than from these like traditional wallets? Cause you can also get pulse chain on MetaMask. Sure. Of course. So the, I guess there's a few things that'll differ, differentiate it. Yes. Like, like you said, you can get pulse chain on MetaMask, but seeing that we are targeting the newer crypto user, you know, onboarding someone to another blockchain through MetaMask is no simple process. And they're overwhelmed. Type in what RPC, what? When I onboarded when, uh, during Thanksgiving uh, last year, I onboarded 10 of my family members. I just grabbed their phone and did it for them because they were like, just do it because it was that overwhelming. 
So our whole shtick with the wallet is going to be simplicity, approachability, and under like an understanding that anyone can download our app new or experienced and find value in it. Also with our app, when new users download our wallet, they will be airdropped for pulse and free internet money. Not a lot, not enough to retire on, but enough to make your first trade, transact, pay your, you know, pay your friend for that hamburger, do that movie ticket, whatever it is. You're going you're to download the app, get the free crypto. So you're going to be able to onboard people into crypto in a matter of five minutes. And we want to make that first three to four minutes seed phrase storage safety. So there, and, and like you said, we're going to have cool stats on there. We aim to have the vote to burn, like be native through the app. We want to have cool things like, you know, how nice would it be to see your dollar cost average on your wallet? You know, all, all, all types of things that make our wallet uh, clean, user-friendly. So that, that, that's a few things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I think the simplicity is like a, a huge marketing component of your project. And I think that that's probably like a huge theme and approach that you guys are doing. And that's really great because I can't tell you how many people that come up to me and ask me all about crypto. And, you know, we, we all have busy lives and stuff and trying to sit down and explain how to set up MetaMask quality. Is just, just <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. Yeah, and like they're like, oh, I have to write down all these C phrases. Like, what happens if I lose it? I was like, don't lose it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, just don't. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, just don't lose it. But um, yeah. so um, and then the other big thing I want to ask you about your wallet: Will you be able to connect to like a, a ledger or a treasure or anything? Or do you guys have plans on doing that in the future? So with so we're gonna be an Android and iOS app as well as a browser extension like MetaMask. On the browser extension or web version, yes, hardware support will come in version one. Now, we, so something interesting, we want to integrate with the Ledger Nano X because it is the, a Bluetooth hardware wallet. And we originally thought that it was only Ledger Live had that capability to connect with it, we found another wallet that integrates to the Ledger Nano X. So this is the first time I'm actually saying this on a video. We may have that Ledger Nano X hardware support from in version one on the mobile. Maybe that's a big maybe. But maybe, yeah, yeah. Des uh, browser extension for sure on version one. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Um, you know, I, I think you know, thing, thing, things can happen down the road and, you know, there's always stuff that you can't plan for. And so, but it's definitely great to see you guys moving forward in that direction. So even, even if that's a big, maybe, um, I think you guys will definitely get there sooner or later. And that that's pretty awesome to have a simplistic wallet that can connect to some sort of hardware advice would be a huge game changer, not only for your project, but for the whole pollution ecosystem, because that's something Absolutely. that the community definitely needs. Cool. So um, when it comes to like that, you know, that mobile app or that wallet, what do you guys have like some sort of time frame? I know that's really hard to ask, but yeah. like, like, well, what, what, what would you say would be like a reasonable time frame? So as far as like, hey, two to three months, like we don't have that time frame at this moment, but we are aiming to launch this wallet as soon after Pulse Chain made that as possible. So if Pulse Chain Mainnet launches tomorrow, well, we're not going to be ready. If it launches, I don't know, six, eight, 10 months down the line, we may be ready on day one um, because th there's a couple added layers of complexity to our wallet. I mean, it's funny, not complex to the user, right? So that's right. what makes it complex for us is because if it's si more simple on the front, it's more complex on the back. So because we're doing the free tokens, that's one thing we haven't seen in another wallet yet as well as we're the first token to integrate into a wallet that shares in the fees. So we're doing two things that are brand new. And so we don't, so we're working through those kinks. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely great. Um, so the, the other thing I, I really uh, wanted to ask you about was, you know, the fiat on ramps and the off ramps. And, you know, for those of you guys who don't know what, what that is it's just basically a way to convert your us dollars into crypto back and forth and 
the most common way most cryptocurrency uh, cryptocurrency users do this is either through like Coinbase, Binance, like a centralized exchange. And um, when it comes to Pulse Chain, you know, it's got all these special components. It's basically Ethereum, but better. But the one downside of this ecosystem is the fiat on and off ramps. Do you guys have any plans on launching something on that caliber, whether it's on the wallet or through the website? So we did, and we still do. But our solution was going to be Dharma, if you're familiar with Dharma. Uh, and then they got acquired by OpenSea. So that derailed that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> So now it's yet the, the short answer is yes. The long answer is we don't know when at this point, because we have to find another solution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one thing I also want to mention, um, our, our channel did a, uh, a great video on power city and power city is going with this kind of decentralized approach with, um, you know, having like an exchange and it's formed by the users when, when you own a utility token, you own part of it. But I think the one thing that really caught my eyes, like that, that project's doing a lot of stuff. You guys are doing a lot of stuff, even though this is an interview about internet money. The one thing I want to mention is, you know, they were talking a lot about, you know, doing collaboration with you guys and, oh yeah, yeah. So I see your face there. So yeah, so, we're, we're, we're talking about that. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, so that's the rumor, and you don't have to address it if you don't want to, but um, I think maybe, were you guys thinking maybe possibly using them as like possibly like a fiat on and off ramp, kind of, like? Truth be told, I don't have anything to tell you about it. We're literally just brainstorming right now, like, like we're ice skate dancing i don't know we're like where do we fit in <laughs> so, <laughs> so so we're we're i'd love to give you a better answer but i don't have one right now okay yeah no no that's fair that's fair that, that's a pretty complex one so but uh sure. but definitely definitely something really cool that and that well definitely something i'm really excited to see with the community because i know richard hart mentioned that you know with the fiat on and off ramps and that's something he really wants to see the community develop so I'm just glad that, you know, people are talking about it and, you know, and it's a, it's a step in the right direction. So, Agreed. so uh, the big thing I want to ask you about is your UI on, on your website. So I, I, I got to be quite frankly honest with you. I remember going, you started the Pulse Chain Altcoins page on Reddit and <laughs> it, I, it was, yeah, yeah, it was the coolest thing ever. It was absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant to do. But you posted internet money for the first time, and I looked at it, and I saw the website, and I, I was like, "Huh, I don't know, I don't know about this," because like the format was interesting, and it's got like kind of like that old feeling, like from like a '70s game, if that makes sense, like with like the coin yeah. and stuff. I don't know why I think of Mario; it's probably probably the worst example, but oh, it's great. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. cool. So. Yeah. I, I was really curious when you guys launched this project right off the bat um, with that UI, like did, were you guys just trying to put something out there and try to like grow the community from the ground up? Or did you guys ever talk about waiting on creating like a really great website? Because one thing with these projects is when we research these projects, the website is probably one of the number one marketing components to bringing oh. users in. And when the user sees like a website that looks like, like, like Bank of America, then increases your confidence on the psychological level. Right. Even right. though I'm not a big fan of Bank of America, I'm not going to bash him because I don't want to turn this political. But I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have really bad issues doing that, man. I'm sure you're the same way to a certain degree. So, yeah, it's but, fine. It's fine. So, um, do you? So do you guys have a plan on updating the UI? And for those guys, you know, don't know what a UI is, it's called a user interface. It's basically what the website looks like in, so, in simple terms. So do you guys have a plan on updating it? And if so, well, what's kind of like the time frame of that launch? So, yes, we do. But we will keep the same theme because that the theme, although our website doesn't have a lot of features right now, the theme is very intentional. That's a, our brand is that. And it's that because it hits basically every generation alive right now, right? Okay, maybe it doesn't hit the 90 year olds, but I don't know. But it hits, it pulls the nostalgic strings 
like you said, Super Mario is great because my parents, even my grandparents and other people's grandparents know Mario, right? They're comfortable with that symbolism. They're comfortable with that graphic and that look. And it even hits the new generation. It's meta. You play Minecraft. 8-bit is coming back hard. So it's like you basically hit everybody alive using the 8-bit. And yes, over time, we will have more features. We will have a more uh, user-friendly website. Um, but again, the brand is going to stay the same. That's very intentional for us. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I didn't really think of it from that perspective. But yeah, no, th that, that makes total sense. And um, yeah, I, I kind of, yeah, that old, that old feeling and it kind of really clashes a lot of generations. So yeah, it could definitely be a great, a great marketing tool. But I'm definitely excited to see what you guys come up, come up with in the future and look at your marketing scheme. Um, speaking of marketing, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll say like, what if internet money gets so big that we do a collaboration with Nintendo and like Mario <laughs> hits the box and then the internet money coin comes up and it's like Nintendo internet money. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. You know, it, it, there's so much potential with it. So much potential. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. You know, um, if if Nintendo was smart, that would be a great approach because the only way a lot of these companies can stay relevant in this space is diving into cryptocurrency and getting absolutely. and getting in with like some of these projects. Cause like I know like like Facebook changed the name to Meta and the metaverse projects just went absolutely bananas, right? It so did. that that's like a great example. It's a poor example, but it's a great example of like how you know. A lot of people people are trying to sell re relevant. Uh, Mark Cuban, eighty percent of his like portfolio now is in cryptocurrency. So it, like you kind of see the riots on the wall. And so, but yeah, Absolutely. no, definitely, definitely. If that happens, I'm putting like all my money in that. If, if <laughs> I'm putting it all in the internet money, if Nintendo <laughs> has that thing pops up, I I swear, I swear, I swear to God, like. I want people to come back, clip this video, be like, all right, you got you got to pay up on your debt. So all right. I'll but, hold you do it. Yeah, definitely. I definitely will put all my money into it. So I'll even sell my hex at that point. Uh, so oh, <laughs> that's how serious careful. I am. I'm just kidding. Someone's probably getting mad at me in the comments. So um you can't say that. Yeah, you can't you just, yeah, you, that's yeah. political. That's political. Yeah, you can't sell hex. <laughs> Not financial advice. So um Awesome. So the, the one big thing I wanted to ask you about was, um, so right now we got internet money on Binance Smart Chain and then Pulse Chain is going to launch. And so I'm kind of, I, I kind of want you to like explain a little bit about how that launch is going to work with, you know, internet money being on Binance Smart Chain. I know um, there might be like a one-on-one -on -one airdrop, like kind of explain how that process is going to work for, you know, new, new investors and people who don't really, haven't really heard much of this project. Sure. So if you, for every IM internet money you hold on the Binance Smart Chain, you will get a one-to-one -one copy on the Pulse Chain. So example, if you hold a hundred on Binance, you're going to have also a hundred on Pulse Chain. So 200 total. We've actually already tested that the code works. We, we exist on Pulse Chain Testnet already. And basically all we do is we take a snapshot of all the holders, which is basically just a picture. And it, not really. It's, it has the wallet addresses and how many tokens that wallet is holding. And we just put that into a little program. And then in two big transactions or two big sins, we send everybody their internet money and we already did it on pulse chain test net. It was awesome. Our developers incredible. So uh, he taught me that you can do batch transactions so you can sign one time and send to 300 people. It's mind boggling. I didn't know that exist. That's pretty awesome, man. That's pretty, that's, yeah. that's pretty freaking awesome. That That's really cool. Um, so after that happens, are you going to keep internet money up on the Binance Smart Chain since, you, since you're doing like a one-on-one -on -one copy, basically? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So we're actually, we don't know the exact direction we're going to take it on the Binance Smart Chain right now because Pulse Chain is our main focus. But what happens to, and you know, I'm sure you know this, but just to everyone watching, 
what happens usually when a project adopts another chain is they'll take the liquidity or the money that represents the value and move it over to the new chain. But we're not doing that. We're leaving all the liquidity, all the money where it is, where it's at, and we're creating a brand new liquidity pool with fresh funds on the Pulse chain side. So Binance is going to exist independently. It's going to operate as its own thing. And we're going to utilize it when we figure out the best way to do that. Yeah, it's literally free internet money. It's pretty crazy. It literally is. Like <laughs> literally free internet money. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> you, could, you couldn't be more accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So kind of kind of still building off of that. Um, so a lot of tokens are going like, you know, uh, multi-chain. And so do you see internet money launching on other blockchains? I know you said you're more exclusive to the Pulse chain because the idea behind this project is to really grow the community. But do you see this project launching on any other blockchains in the future? Internet money, maybe. Internet money dividend, yes. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. That's some juicy detail right there. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, kind of just moving on. Um, so typically with every token project, you know, you have like a special classification from certificate deposits to metaverse to like layer one, layer two, et cetera, et cetera. So would you consider internet money like a certificate of deposit or what, what kind of classification would you put it at? Peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. Oh, okay. Yeah, we actually covered that in the beginning. But yeah, yeah. No, okay. that's fine. No, it's because we want internet money to be adopted for goods and services. We literally want you to be able to go to a store or and obviously that's that type of stuff comes much later. But even between friends and communities of people who pay each other with internet money from their internet money wallet, right? We, we want it to be a, we, we want it to change hands. Sure, you can hold it and invest in it and speculate on the value, but ultimately we want it to change hands. So that's what we're trying to build too. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think kind of building off of that, um, th there's a lot of like currencies that are actually going for, for that market. And that's actually probably the hot one coming up and Crypt, it hasn't really been covering crypto right now because right now I think we're in like the passive income boom because everyone loves making passive income on these projects because I think kind of hex opened up that floodgate and then everyone just started going bananas. Like I don't know if you ever heard of Drip or any 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 of these other projects, but they're they're taking that similar concept. Now XRP and XLM are two projects that I kind of want to bring up, and I know it's it, it's a, it's a uh, definitely a different concept, but the peer-to-peer -peer transactions is very, very important. And so I think with internet money, do you see it as a major competitor with XRP and XLM? I have one question yes. that answers this question. What's more brandable, Stellar Lumens, XRP, or internet money? Probably internet money. Right, because it's approachable. XLM, Stellar Lumens, XRP, Ripple. My mom's not using Ripple. My mom thinks Bitcoin's a scam. If anything, she's going to think the, the, it's the concept and the brand behind internet money. So yes, arguably, you could say it's competition in that we are attempting to do the same thing, but they, they lose and they already have a bigger community, so they, they're winning right now, but they lose the branding game. And oh, yeah. so when so and also when users download our wallet, the first token they're ever going to be introduced to is internet money. So every time we get a new user into crypto through our wallet, it's internet money. So it's just I think we're gonna win the branding game long term. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I I didn't think of it from that perspective. That's a that's actually a really really good point. And you know the funny part about it is I, I don't know if you listen to rap music, but Internet Money is actually the name of an of an album, and it's really popular with like uh, I believe it was Generation Z. 
So I reached uh, out to them on Twitter. I tr- I'm trying to collab with them right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already there, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to get a rap song about us. Oh man, you're already, right, already ahead of the game. I I remember when I first hit, uh, heard that. I think it was like on a trippy red song. Said Internet Money in the beginning, and then when I saw your project, I heard his voice in my head. <laughs> so. I guess you are winning the branding game at that point. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm already, I'm, I'm already trying to reach out to them. I'm like, hey, look, just give me one shout out in the song. That's all I need. Let's go. Definitely, definitely. So, um, I had a question about air money, internet money dividend, but you kind of already explained it at the beginning, at the beginning of this interview. So, I don't really want to cover, you know, the introduction to it because we already talked about it. Now. The one big thing I had a concern about with the internet money dividend is, you know, there's going to be a sacrifice phase and um, there's like pool A and pool B. And I believe pool A, um, you get 80% of the supply up to, I think it's $1.5 million. And then after that, you have pool B and then it's 20 per, it's like 20% of the supply. Did I get that right for the sacrifice? I think I might have messed that up. Close. Yeah, so it's 71% for pool A and up to 10% in pool B. Uh, and actually, the sacrifice already played out. Right. So, right. yeah, so we ultimately landed on the pool B didn't get filled. So we landed on about 78% of the supply is going to the sacrifice set. Okay. Okay. Yep. Got it. So that's kind of like a precursor to this next question. Um, kind of explain that a little bit confusingly, but uh, thank you for uh, picking up and, and clarifying on that. So in the black paper, I read, if you wish to purchase IMD, internet money dividend, after the time of the sacrifice, it will have to be done from a participator of the sacrifice. Now, um, I, I, I understand why you guys are doing that, but... Do you guys think that'll be very limiting to the project growth where, you know, um, you know, typically uh, projects put like their liquidity on like exchange and you can go in and buy more of these tokens, but it seems like um, it can only be participators selling. So like, what, what are your kind of, what, what is your reasoning by them and what's your overall thoughts? Sure. So inter, uh, internet money dividend, IMD, may very well be the first token in crypto where the price of the token is irrelevant because, or maybe not irrelevant, but it, yeah, in a way it's irrelevant because users that are holding the token are getting passive income in the form of pulse. And depending on how long they want to hold that token and how much passive income they're receiving in the form of pulse is going to change the price of the token for every person. So if someone's trying to hit a quick two to five X, sure, they're probably going to be able to do that pretty easily. But if they think I'm going to hold this token for 10 years and I see this wallet generating me $10,000, $20,000 a year, month in fees, well, you might have to pay that person $100 a token. Who knows? So we have no intention to provide liquidity for this because the... Well, A, so much of the supply is already out there. And B, we want in true decentralized fashion for the market to establish the price. So it's going to be kind of a cool experiment, so to speak, because the first person that creates the liquidity pool is saying, this is what I'm willing to let my passive income go for. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. And um, for those of you who don't know, um, it seems like, uh, you took that similar concept off of, you know, when you buy a stock and you hold a stock, you get like a dividend payment. And it's kind of like the same thing with IMD. I mean, it, it's in the name, like internet money dividend, but no, you hit the nail on the head. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause um, what, what a lot of these really, really uh, rich people like to do is they just like to buy a bunch of stock, never sell it and then live off the dividends and basically not pay taxes off of it. So that, yeah. So no, no, that, that's a great, that's a great concept. And um, I'm really glad you clarified because I've actually had people ask me about that. And um, I think this will definitely help um, alleviate their concerns. So um, is there, I, I think we talked about this a little bit more, but um, is there, 
I mean, a little bit earlier, not more. So is there a burn function with internet money dividend? Nope. It's a static supply. There's 2 billion. They're all going to be minted at the time of launch and it doesn't inflate or deflate. Okay. Just 2 billion forever. Cool. So um, what would be your advice for someone who um, was in the sacrifice phase for IMD on how to get their hands on that pretty cool token? Yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to have to buy it from someone because that we're not minting anymore. Right. So if, if no one ever sells, then it's not for sale. <laughs> I, I hate, I hate, I hate to like limit the holders there, but well, Oh, 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 you know what? Let me, let me take that back. Let me take that back. Let me take that back. So IMD on pulse chain, you're going to have to buy it from somebody who participated in the sacrifice. Now, like I said earlier, IMD is going to be a multi-chain token. So every blockchain that we support on our wallet, we plan to also launch IMD on that chain. So we don't know exactly how we're going to approach splitting that supply up. There may be other sacrifice phases. There may be ICOs. There may be, uh, I don't know. We, we don't know. We don't know. But there will be opportunity to get in on IMD on other chains as an early adopter like people, IMD holders on Pulse Chain did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's definitely a really cool approach. And I think that multi-chain component is going to really, really incentivize, you know, more people from like, you know, other blockchains to come over the Pulse Chain, especially since exactly. this, right, right. Especially this is like a very uh, big Pulse Chain based token. Um, so... I think the other thing I want to ask, have you guys ever uh, talked about doing some sort of like bridge through your project to other blockchains after those launches, theoretically in a theoretical situation? <laughs> yes. How, how big of a priority is that? Not sure at this moment, but we have definitely talked about it because it would be cool to just be able to straight up change Pulse Chain IMD to Binance IMD or whatever. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, definitely need to ask you something about you know the future of the ecosystem. So you definitely really really um talk a lot about it in this video. But um, are you planning on like you know maybe possibly launching you know new tokens outside of like IM and IMD and keep adding like more utility behind each of these tokens going on into the future? Yes. Okay. We, we actually, uh, we're a company and the name of our company is digital asset creation. And so internet money, the internet money ecosystem is, is our first project and it, it won't be the last. Now, does that mean we add other tokens or value to the internet money ecosystem? Maybe. Does that mean we branch off and do other projects elsewhere? Maybe, but we're here. We're going to be around. So if people come into our community, our communities are going to be the first to hear about all the new projects that we're creating. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Um, one, one thing I, I noticed is like, I like to get into some of these mining games and be a complete degenerate, not financial advice. <laughs> do please do your own research. <laughs> and I, I, I've been very, very, you know, successful and very fortunate with, with a lot of these games, but, um, I think the one thing that you see with a lot of these projects is staying relevant because crypto moves fast, as you know, and anyone viewing this video, and you got to constantly keep, you know, evolving to stay relevant. And so it's really great to see you guys continue down this approach because, you know, I see like with a lot of projects, you know, they launch like another layer of a token, then another layer, and then they stop and they run out of ideas and then everyone's on to the next new thing. So it's like, it's like sure. literally your attention spans like two hours and someone's looking at something different and it's just like, sure. it's crazy. So, um, so another big one, um, almost a lot of projects love NFTs and like metaverse stuff. Have you guys talked about doing something like that in the future? Like supporting it on our wallet or doing an NFT project? 
whether it's doing an NFT project or collaborating with another project on, on an NFT metaverse project. Um, so something on that lines. Yes. So if, so yes, is the short answer. And if we do end up power, uh, powering, <laughs> partnering up with power city, then that could be our first collaboration into the metaverse with internet money. Also, we, we are, we do want to do something with NFTs. We don't know exactly how that's going to play out yet, but actually we collaborated with uh, one NFT creator called Stake in Apes and he created internet money's first NFT. So that was pretty cool. Um, we, it's actually a boy. He, he does a rendition of the board apes and I'll send it to you so you can see it. It's cool. Um, okay. But yeah, ultimately we, we want to do something with NFTs, but we just don't know exactly how that's going to play out yet. Okay. No, no, that's definitely cool. And, uh, definitely something I like to throw in the pot there, uh, after, you know, I, I do a lot of research into these projects. And one thing I see a lot, what a lot of projects like to do is, you know, the whole staking an NFT, that that's the one thing that people love to buy. And I can't tell you how many projects I've seen where, Anytime you hear passive income NFT and basically they're sold out like five seconds after launch. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So I'm not saying you guys are going to do that, but I mean, you know, just, a, just suggestion, just not, not, not sure. Su- yeah. So cool. So that was kind of it for all the uh, stuff on your project. And so I want to ask you just, uh, just a few questions on Pulse Chain because since you're so big with the community and, It'd be great to get another fresh perspective on this, you know, upcoming launch because this is probably going to be one of the biggest crypto events ever, and yeah. I'm I'm so excited for it. So, <laughs> so um, when it when it comes to uh, you know, Pulse Chain, uh, I know you know this, but for those who don't know what Pulse Chain is, it's going to be a fork of Ethereum. It's going to have proof of stake, and it's going to be deflationary right off the bat at launch, and so. It's not going to have to uh, suffer from any inflation and the transaction speed is going to be uh, super duper fast in comparison to Ethereum. So in your opinion, um, with consideration to blockchains like Wallace, where they have like 75,000 transactions per second, uh, the XRP blockchain, which is pretty dominant with the upcoming launch of the Flare Network, and then the XCC blockchain, which is becoming a huge monster, how do you think Paul Shane is going to perform um, in competition with those other blockchains that I kind of just listed? So basically, like overall, what do you think the performance is going to be? So one, there's two things that I think, or three things that I think Pulse Chain has that I believe those other blockchains didn't have. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But A, I think, the, again, it goes back to branding. Pulse Chain has an awesome brand it's approachable the logo is simple it makes sense you could say pulse chain pulse chain pulse chain i i when you get into the numbers and letters and all these weird things you just lose people the crypto nerds like we are sure of course but again when we're talking about massive onboarding i think pulse chain wins the branding game also we have richard hart who you love him or you hate him he's big he's got a following right so do those other blockchains going into their blockchain, did they have not that following? And not only that following, did they have that community? So where it's like, hey, we, we made a blockchain, come play. We, we have, like you said, Hex alone has 100,000 wallets. 170-ish thousand people sacrificed for PulseX. So let's say, let's pretend that each one of those users, and not everybody who sacrificed for PulseX holds Hex. So let, let's say somewhere between 150 and 200,000 people. That's, that means, let's assume that all those people jump on the chain. That's a chain starting with 150 to 200,000 users. And so that's reason two. Reason three, okay, I guess there's four reasons, sorry. Reason three is they're copying all the ERC-20 contracts, all the Ethereum contracts. So all the tokens that people know and love on Ethereum, they're going to be able to come over to Pulse Chain and hold them, interact with them. Even if people come over to Pulse Chain to just dump their copies, that's still someone who created a Pulse Chain wallet, interacted with Pulse Chain, paid gas fees, burned Pulse. So it's interaction. 
And then finally, we already have projects building on a chain that doesn't even exist yet. So I think that Pulse Chain is going to have a much stronger start than any of these other chains. And it's going to win the long-term branding race. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You definitely brought some really great points. Um, I think the one thing I kind of want to add to, you know, the one-on-one copy of all those Ethereum tokens is that you, you see almost every one of these blockchains create a bridge, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, they're gr- those bridges are great, but there's like there's an added amount of work to get Absolutely. to that blockchain. But what's great about Pulse Chain is like, you know, um, we'll take like Uniswap. So you got Uniswap on Ethereum, you got it on uh, Pulse Chain. Uniswap gets tired of Ethereum, they can easily switch it over to Pulse Chain because the coding's already there. And so, exactly. And yeah, and then um, the ad, yeah, another added feature, and I know you know this, but PulseX is planning on doing some sort of farming where you can just bridge over your tokens on Ethereum and match it with your tokens on Pulse Chain, and you can basically farm uh, Pulse Chain tokens. And I don't know how that process is going to work because keep in mind, Pulse Chain is going to be deflationary. So um, there, there's going to be a little bit more details behind that. But when you incentivize, you know, uh, more projects to take their tokens from Ethereum to Pulse Chain, then you're going to basically, you know, increase the liquidity on, on, on the Pulse Chain and you're going to bring in a lot more users. So that's a big one. So definitely really great. But I think the one thing that really concerns me, well, two things that concerns me about Pulse Chain, and keep in mind, you know, um, as an engineer, like, I, the one thing I learned is there's no such thing as perfect perfection. There's calculated risk with everything you do in life. And I think my main concern with pulse chain is how it's going to compete with these mass, with these blockchains coming out with these crazy amount of transaction speeds. And that's a question for mostly for Richard Hart, sure. but um, there's that because like Wallace is already getting like 75,000, even though it's kind of centralized with that one massive node. And there's and like Cardano one day is going to have like over 100 million transactions per second. So it'd be really cool to see how Pulse Chain develops with like, you know, hard forks and how, how it goes down the road with like basically a hard fork is like an upgrade for those of you guys who don't know what, what it is. And then the other thing is interoperability. And so I think the one thing that's going to be a game changer for layer one is, you know, how do these blockchains communicate? And Cardano has an interoperability feature, Avalanche, Cosmos, and then Polkadot. And then uh, Ethereum is trying to develop a side chain. I believe it's called a side chain feature, but it's going to be very difficult because, you know, you have to pay like a hundred dollar gas fee to do a transaction. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Hex community, I can tell you, the Hex community does not like Ethereum for that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so I think those are the two big things I kind of want to throw out there and just being completely transparent because it, it's great because Pole Chain has a lot of great stuff, but that's a big downside. And I'm just curious, like, well, what's your thoughts on that? Like, you know, the interoperability and the transaction speed. No, I mean, those are great points. They truly are. And maybe Pulse Chain ends up not being the fastest blockchain. And again, to the crypto nerds, that matters. But the question is going to come down to, and look, crypto nerd is not a derogatory term. I'm a crypto nerd. And those kind of things matter to me. They matter to you, of course. Proud term. But yeah, yeah, I'm proud. I wear it like a badge of honor. Um, (laughs) what, What matters to the average user is how easy is this thing to use? How approachable? That's why so many people still use Ethereum. They don't care that they're paying gas. They don't care that their transactions take three minutes. They just know it because there's the most resources and the most YouTube videos and everything is. So that's what it comes down to. And I think Pulse Chain, if Richard Hart does what he says he's going to do, I think Pulse Chain can win. Yeah. So ultimately, yes, uh, crypto nerds are going to care. Average user, they care about something totally different. Because what, what's the difference? If, if a blockchain to them is three seconds versus five seconds, but the five second chain is like, it's it's comfortable. They don't care about that two second difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. That, that's definitely a really great point because I feel like your project and many other projects on, on this Pulse, Pulse Chain ecosystem is trying to make it 
make the overall blockchain user friendly from every single Black. aspect. And that that's really great to see. And I, I feel like, you know, when it comes to, you know, getting on the, like the Ethereum blockchain or the Avalanche blockchain, there's already, there's already coins on Coinbase. And Coinbase is like the major centralized exchange for anyone to go through. Like, I'll be honest, I use it. A lot of other people use it. You do. But <laughs> yeah, you use it. So it's like that, that's like the main hub. And when it comes to, you know, trying to get to like a, a blockchain like Polygon or um, like Binance, it, it, it's difficult because, you know, you have to go through a bridge and a bridge seems very simplistic when you talk about it. But when you're actually going through the motion and doing it, you always run into issues, whether it's trying to get a transaction approved and it takes like a day. Like I, I tried to branch over from Avalanche to Binance the other day and it took me one day to get that uh, bridge. Oh bridge. my, I'd be so nervous. Like, where's my money? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was about to have a heart attack. I, I was so <laughs> angry. I was about to say, you know what? Avalanche, you're dead to me. <laughs> so. <laughs> Dude, and imagine if somebody is like trying to transfer a million, two, three, ten million dollars. They're not okay with, hey, that took a day. They're not okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it will be very, very interesting to see how 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 these things get approached. But I definitely wanted to ask you that because you know you're so big within the community. And so, all right. So I got one last final question. It's gonna be a juicy one. So Answer this very carefully. So, like I said before, none of this is financial advice, but what is your first year prediction for Pulse Chain's overall performance, whether it's in, well, we'll say price. So, what's your overall price prediction? You know, like I said, not financial advice. Don't take this seriously. It's just an opinion. Oh, man. That's a big one. Yeah, I know. Uh, You know, so I'll be honest. I'm not one of those guys who dives deep and crazy into the price predict predictions, but just giving some generalities, I think that it's probably going to be a worse rate than what you said. First year. It's just first year. Yeah. First year. year. Okay. I think a, a big metric to look at is what was the biggest bubble of late sacrificers, right? So Yeah, there's still people sacrificing today at like one pulse is $3 or whatever the crazy rate is, but to the, to the final bubble of uh, the late sacrificers. So I think they're really going to set the initial price. Now we're probably going to see a big dump because people have, especially waiting this long, people are going to want to realize some gains. So I would say first in in the early days, don't freak out. It's, it's going to dump my personal opinion. It's going to dump hard. Just be ready for it. I think first year, it's very likely we see a 10x. I, I mean, especially if the adoption happens, like if Richard Hart pulls this thing off, how is the word not going to spread like wildfire, at least through the crypto industry? Oh, yeah. So I and even if, like I said, even if people come over to Pulse just to dump their free coins, they're still, excuse me. They're still going to have to buy Pulse to do it. So I really do. Th- I, I see at least a 10X by the end of the first year, at least. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'll add my price prediction so you're not the only one, you know, under, under please, fire. Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that, you know, everyone looks at Hex as like a great indicator for Pulse chain, but that's probably not the best one you want to use because um, I think, when the hex was launched, is that it was at a different period of time in comparison to Pulse Chain because so many people know about this project already. So many people already just hop in and ready to just go bananas. So, like I, like you said before, I completely agree. There's going to be a massive dump. You know, you're going to get these cats that are going to take profits and they're going to try to be degenerates and rob the bank and all that. But I think within the first year, I would probably see a thousand X. And the reason why I'm going to say that is because you're going to see a massive load of users come on. You're going to see projects start to realize that, hey, Ethereum's not doing it. We got our software already on Pulse Chain. Let's uh, jump ship and go go over here. And it's sure. going to 
increase the overall load. So that's what I'm thinking. A thousand X, uh, some people are saying 10,000 X. And I think your, your prediction is definitely uh, a, a pretty good one as, as well. So anywhere from a 10 X to a thousand X, but ultimately, you know, this is a crazy time for crypto, so we don't know. So it's cool to speculate, but sure. um, usually outside of our speculation, you know, no one ever, no one ever gets it right. So I'm definitely excited to see what happens and I'm sure you are too. So. Yeah. And you, I am, and you're, you could be totally right. Like I'm not bearish on a thousand X. I think it's totally possible because there are a lot of very unique factors to pulse chain that we've never seen before. So, you know, look, I hope I'm wrong. I'd love to see a thousand X. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah. So let's just, I'd love to see a thousand X. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, it's so interesting because, you know, Richard Art always talked about, you know, um, launching, well, he never really said specifically you want to launch in a bear market, but on, on his past, um, I guess you can call them like podcasts or videos on YouTube, he mentioned that, you know, Ethereum was launched in a bear market and, you know, it's not the worst thing if Pulse Chain was launched in a bear market. And then you got, I call them crypto conspiracy theorists, you know, I mean, they're not really conspiracy theorists, but they jump on and they're saying, oh, it's going to launch in a bear market or whatnot. But I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you always get those guys, you know, you get, you get one dot, you got another dot and you just try to connect these dots in this weird pattern formation. And you know, I mean, I mean sure. we, we all do it. So there's no hate against that, but. I think, you know, um, depending on how the market is and when he launches it, if it if it's going to be at the at, at the top of the blow off tops, we're probably going to see a very different scenario where it matches closer to what you're seeing with the 10x. But if we launch during a bear market and you get these people not interested in crypto anymore, just leave and you got all these people that are, you know, diamond hands for life, then we can definitely see a huge uh, uh, return. So, but overall, you know, I do think, you know, Paul Shin's a great investment. I'm sure you can agree with me, not putting words in your mouth, but um, uh, not financial advice, do your own research, all that good stuff. So, yeah, yeah. But opinion, full opinion, I'm very happy I sacrificed for Pulse Chain. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like Pulse Chain, the Pulse X, and then we got, we got this whole new, uh, evolving uh phenomenon where you know all these projects on pulse chain are just sacrificing so it's, i think it's going to be replacing like icos because it i mean it makes more sense to go this route because you're getting fr you're basically getting a gift or free money and it's tax-free irs don't don't come after me but i think yeah i think yeah yeah so I think this is going to be the best approach and I think there's going to be a huge concern behind ISOs in, in the future, but that's, that's the one thing I'll give Richard Hart props is, you know, how he introduced that sacrifice and how successful it was. And I'm, I'm really excited to see you guys deal with internet money too. And it seemed like it was a huge success as well. So definitely a huge congratulations about that. So. Thanks. Appreciate you. And I agree, Richard Hart, came up with an incredible concept that yeah he he definitely already changed the paradigm of what you can do with an ico which you know we're not calling it that anymore but uh no agreed incredible very incredible definitely definitely cool all right well i think we're gonna wrap up this interview this was a phenomenal interview kg definitely really excited you know posting our youtube channel i think it's going to answer a lot of these like, you know, inside baller questions that, you know, a lot of people probably have on their minds, but it's kind of hard to answer because, you know, you, you probably have so much going on and, you know, you, you got other responsibilities. So I definitely want to really thank you for, you know, sitting down and talking with us. It's definitely really exciting. And um, I can't wait to see what happens with internet money in the future. I think it's, a, I definitely believe it's a great project. And I think the ultimate game changer is what you guys uh, put out on the utility end going on into the future. And based off our conversation, I don't think you have too much to worry about. So, Well, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the opportunity. And everyone, please subscribe to this guy, wherever you're at in relation. He's, uh, he's awesome, man. You're doing awesome things for the community. So keep it up, please.
Yeah, appreciate that. And uh, also, we're going to drop in all the uh, socials and the website for Internet Money down below. If any of you guys are interested in this project, please check out the website, read the black paper, watch this video. Make sure you get a full understanding before you jump in, into this project because the Pulse Chain launch is right around the corner and you have the opportunity to get a nice airdrop. So definitely check that out. And uh, with that being said, thanks, KG. And anyone viewing this video, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.